In this video, I'd like to demonstrate to you an exercise that we use to illustrate how Three Shape Trios stitches together all the, the many images it takes during a scanning process to create a full th um, and highly accurate three-dimensional representation of the patient's dentition. We're all familiar with uh, current digital uh, photographic technology, whereby we have a, a panoramic function within the, within the camera. So we take, a, an take an image and sweep the camera across the landscape or the, the photograph that we wish to capture. And with software, we'll automatically stitch everything together. Prior to that technology becoming uh, commonplace, it was normal for, for us to take several photographs and then manually stitch them together, uh, maybe on a piece of card and frame it on a wall or, or, or blackboard or whiteboard or whatever. So in this case, I have a, uh, six images from Inishore, a small little Irish island on the west coast of Ireland, full of uh, traditional um, Irish landmarks, stone walls, roads, 40 shades of green, and on this rare occasion, we uh, were lucky enough to have a, a blue sky. So what I want to do is just reposition these images in order to uh, to uh, demonstrate how this, how what we need to do in order to get a, a continuous image, and try and replicate what the software in Trios is trying to do at the same time as it's capturing images throughout the scanning process. So first thing we do is we look for for commonality between the images. So let's start with these two images here in the center. It might be easy and. and and uh, obvious for us just to maybe line up the horizon line initially. And as we do so, that looks great, but then we maybe realize that the clouds aren't aligned, or perhaps the stone wall isn't aligned, or maybe some of the patterns here in this field aren't aligned. So then we realize that in fact, there is some overlap. And as I slide the images together, maintaining a horizon here, I see that the clouds now come in line, the wall comes in line, and to some degree, the, the pattern here on the field comes in line. So there is a little bit of toing, throwing, forward and backing, and we get to a point where we're pretty happy with that. And we'll put a magnet there to hold those two images together. And then we move on to the next one. And again, we're looking for some overlap, maintaining the horizon. And we realize, and here we can see that stone shed. It appears in both images, so we bring it over until they align. And we get some nice alignment between the wall and the road, the horizon, the clouds, everything looks good there. Moving on to the next one, we do the same. Now this time we have some mountains in the background, which are the mountains of Clare. I'm looking at the horizon, I'm looking at the shadows on the road, the structure of the walls, the clouds. And we get some nice alignment there. And we're running out of magnets, but I think we'll, I think we'll be okay. We do the same here. And now I'm looking at the horizon has changed. The cloud pattern has changed. I have a little house here. The same house exists here. So we can use that as an initial point of alignment. And that looks good there. And we do the same here again. The wall is now tapering off at an angle. We have several houses. There's a house here with some solar panels on the top. The same here as well. And we align them like so. And we get to a point where everything is aligned reasonably well. Obviously with distortions within the, due to the optics of the camera and so on, that makes it quite difficult to align everything completely um, perfectly. But we get a really nice representation now here of the of the landscape. Six images, two to three minutes to align everything. Now consider trios. What's it doing? How many thousands of images is it capturing a second? How fast, how much hard work has the processor got to do? How hard is the software working? Can imagine how complex those algorithms are in order to capture and process all of that data that's been captured at such a high speed and turn it into a very accurate three-dimensional representation. Looking back in the images, how do we, we, we relied on commonality between one image and the next. And in situations where there was a lot of commonality, it was easy to overlap the images. Now imagine I had another six images up here of the sky. How difficult would it be to align those images? Or some more images of the road, and it was just different shades of grey, different shades of blue. It becomes more and more difficult to create accurate alignment. What if we had another image here? and then here, and here, and here, and here. And we could imagine then that the 
as we move along here, it's going to become more and more difficult because of the tiny little errors that have arisen from alignment between these images. As we move up here, you might find that there are greater discrepancies and greater, image, uh, greater errors within the image. So it's always important for us to, to uh, remember that and, and understand what's going on because for the same problems that we have when we're aligning this, the software will have exactly the same problems uh, when, when aligning subscans from a, from a full art scan or from any, any scan. So whether we bear that in mind is when we're scanning molars, occlusal surfaces on molars, there's a lot of detail. So it's very easy for the software to understand where it is and to add detail onto that. Whereas if we were scanning any dentulous patient or perhaps a facial aspect of, a, of an upper incisor, that becomes, the, the, the detail is quite flat. There's very little variation in the geometry and variation within the detail. And then it becomes more, more difficult for the software to stitch all of that information. Can it do it accurately? Yes, it can. But we've got to consider that the software and the computer have a lot more work to do. They have more thinking to do. Therefore, we need to move slower as we're scanning and bear that in mind for the software. So we always like this little exercise. Uh, we've all been making jigsaws from, from, from the age of two or three with our parents. And now as, as a parent myself, I do the same with my own children. And we see that the same techniques that we, we apply when making jigsaws, when stitching together images here, are, are exactly the same as the, as the techniques used during a trio scan.